Hey guys, this is Thomas Wells, the body mechanic, and I'm here to talk just a little bit about a common condition that I see in my office, and that is frozen shoulder. Uh, you've all probably heard of it. Many of you probably have it. I'd say I can't go a week without someone walking in with it. Um, so if your arm can't lift past about there or you can't get it behind your back, there's a good chance you're suffering from frozen shoulder. Uh, a lot of people think they have frozen shoulder because they lack some range of motion, uh, but just lacking range of motion alone uh, doesn't mean you have frozen shoulder. Fr frozen shoulder, by definition, is adhesive capsulitis, where you've got a lot of scar tissue built around the shoulder capsule and glomming things together and restricting the range of motion that way. Um, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different contributing factors to frozen shoulder. Uh, it tends not to happen to the younger set. Uh, most commonly it's people over the age of 40. Uh, in fact, in Japan and China, they actually call it a uh, 50 year old shoulder. Uh, so it, it is usually kind of the middle aged crowd and older that gets this. Uh, certain predisposing factors are things like diabetes, uh, obesity, cardiovascular disease. Uh, more women get it than men, but anyone can get it. Um, recent research suggests that chronic inflammation uh, from any number of different sources can be uh, what sets people into a frozen shoulder process. Um, and it's often triggered by some kind of injury as well, whether that's a rotator cuff injury or a bicep injury. Uh, so you've got the local injury combined with uh, that chronic inflammation from whatever source, whether it be some sort of metabolic disorder or whether it be uh, something dietary or some response to an environmental chemical, whatever. It's, but it's, a, it's kind of a complex situation. Now, Current research suggests that it can take, uh, on average, about 30 months for frozen shoulder to fully resolve. And that, that's a long time. That's, what, what, what two and a half years uh, that it can take. Some people sooner, some people it takes longer. Uh, it usually does resolve itself given enough time. Um, but obviously, the goal is to make that go faster. Um, it usually happens in three main stages. Uh, there's the inflammatory stage where the shoulder starts to get exquisitely painful. It can be very debilitating. Uh, and that proceeds for a number of months until you start to get into the freeze. And in the freeze, that's when the lack of mobility really starts. Dur during the inflammatory phase, you often aren't moving the shoulder purely because it hurts, but that range of motion exists. Then the freeze happens and now you can't move the shoulder even if you want to. Uh, and it's still exquisitely painful. But then what starts to happen is the pain starts to subside and you're just, just left with the frozen shoulder. So you, so you can do the majority of the things you want to do without a great deal of pain. You just can't get, you just can't access range of motion about higher than that. You can't get your arm behind your back. You, you have severe limitations in abduction and rotation of the shoulder. But as long as you avoid those things, you, you can get by fairly pain free. And then the thaw comes, and with the thaw, you start to slowly get your range of motion back, and then around that 30-month mark, you're, you're generally kind of back to the way you were before. Though oftentimes people, the, oftentimes a lot of that scar tissue will still remain that's developed in the shoulder, and you'll have less range of motion than you had before. You'll still be able to get your arm, you know, pretty up there, but it's not going to be 100% the way it was before. So, so that's kind of the basics of frozen shoulder. And then there's what we do about it. So there, there's a few different approaches that I take. Um, again, if it's true frozen shoulder adhesive capsulitis, that, that's what I'm specifically discussing. There's a lot of other reasons a person can have restricted range of motion and adhesion in the shoulder, and those are all usually pretty simple and straightforward to correct. It's when it's true adhesive capsulitis uh, particularly if it has a metabolic co contributor to it, that's where it gets a little trickier. So, so there's a few different angles I have to take. First, I have to deal with the chronic inflammation. So uh, 
I try to identify what the source of that is, whether it's uh, dietary, uh, there, there's a psychosocial element of it too, where uh, uh, psychological stress, emotional stress can actually add to that infl inflammation. So often working on the emotional element is a big piece of it. Um, looking for dietary and environmental triggers towards that inflammation. Uh, so that's going after the inflammatory component of it. Uh, then there's the adhesion part of it, which is which is a, a very crucial piece um, dealing with that scar tissue. So I have a, a couple main tools I have for dealing with that scar tissue. First, there's active release, ART. Uh, that's a good manual therapy for getting in there and creating motion, uh, getting those layers of tissue sliding on each other, bringing circulation in, uh, breaking up some, some of that adhesion and helping the body break up the rest. So that's crucial. Uh, and then there's also the cold laser that I use pretty pretty heavily for frozen shoulder. In fact, when I first got my laser, frozen shoulder is actually why I bought it. That was my that was the main thing I wanted it for, and it has not disappointed um, because the laser has the ability to penetrate. It can go down a few inches through the flesh, so it can it can get it can get the areas that I have trouble getting to with my hands with the active release to start creating that motion in the shoulder uh, with a focus on the capsule and a focus on uh, things adhered to the capsule as well and creating motion within the joint. And then as I start getting some motion back into the shoulder and I take a pretty aggressive approach with frozen shoulder, it tends to respond well to a more aggressive approach. Uh, once I start getting some motion in there, then I start have to dealing with the motor control element, uh, the the compensatory movements, the excuse me, the the movement patterns, the uh, compensation. You know, too strong here, too weak, too there, wrong firing sequence here, so on and so forth. And, and I have a number of different techniques. I have uh, PDTR for that, neurokinetic therapy for that, uh, and and my own proprietary system, which. Um, is the lion's share of what I use in the clinic, but it doesn't even have a name yet. I, I'm not teaching it yet. Um, so those are my go-tos, th those three techniques, and I kind of bounce bounce around between them. Uh, and pretty good success. Frozen shoulder still, by and large, does take a while. It, it, it is a process. It is not a procedure to, to clear up frozen shoulder. It is a process, but you can make it a much faster process than that traditional 30 months. Uh, and you can definitely make it. Um, you you can make it such that when when your frozen shoulder is gone, that you get that full range of motion back versus a nearly full range of motion, which is typical when frozen shoulder is allowed to just run its course. Uh, so if you do have this, I don't encourage you to just wait it out. Again, it will get better, but. You can be pretty miserable in the interim. It's better to intervene and make this a faster rehab and, and have a better outcome. And there definitely is hope for you. So I encourage you to, you know, give me a call or see, see another therapist, someone who can really get in there and uh, address those three core contributing factors, the, the inflammation, the scar tissue, and the, the uh, compensation patterns. So hopefully that was help, helpful for you. Uh, feel free to contact me and schedule an appointment if you'd like me to take a look at your shoulder. Uh, thanks for joining me.